and they got a very clear iron signal. It's a US MK2 frag grenade, so you got to be very careful with the stuff, guys. We have a Panzerfaust over here. You could probably fire this at some tanks riding down there. Morning. Welcome to a brand new metal detecting adventure. You're watching Metal Detecting World to Do Battlegrounds. So we just arrived at our first location of the day. And as you can see, there's remains of barrack foundations everywhere here. Um, there should have been a, a barrack site here, a Wehrmacht base. Look, there's barracks here as well. Let's set up the detectors and see if you can find something. I was just called over by Matthias because apparently he found a flak casing and he found this World War II lighter. There you go, I've seen these models before. They're definitely from the right time frame. Yeah, there's also some deep iron signals here, so we're gonna check those out. I'm running over to Ray. He just called me over the walkie. Told me that he found something cool. <laughs> wow. <That's big. laughs> Look at that, did you find that before? This is a, I think this is an American pickaxe, right? Yeah, I, have a, I have a smaller one. This, this, this one's a lot, a lot bigger. Okay, well, it's a nice uh, uh, contribution to your collection and uh, <laughs> Second bit, nice. Interesting, so obviously the wooden part is gone. You could probably dig in well with this tool. Let me just make my way towards Jeff because he also encountered the dump and uh, already had some cool finds in there. So let me see what he has exactly. There we go. Toothbrushes, wow, that's nice, man. Look at those colors. Is there writing on there? Oh, what's that? It's a muscle protector. Muscle protector, wow, I've never seen that actually before. I find the same. Should bottle, nice thing. little bottle there as well. Oh, wow, for which rifle or... We don't know yet. Can't remember, don't recall this one. Nice uh, start at this location. So, let me just show you that little dump site that Jeff found. Well, it's not so little anymore, we can say. <laughs> and there we go. That's quite a lot of bottles, actually. Did you say you found Opecta bottles? Oh, look at those. For those of you that do not know what Opecta is, the father of Anne Frank had a fruit juice company in Amsterdam. This is the brand that they sold, Opecta. It's a cool piece of history, that's for sure. You can see this ditch running through the woods here. And Ray actually just found a rotten German gas mask down there. Um, but Faye actually just called me over, told me she found a button. There you can see a clear symbol. This is a British uniform button. I think this one went on the overcoat. Yeah, and here's the rotten gas mask from Ray. There's not much left of that. This is a part of the filter. Well, I think Ray is the gas mask man today. I don't think we've had that mentioned before. And right over there is another one. That's the filter part. Oh, well, it was in between the actual mask and the filter. There we go. But there's more there. Oh, wow, those are the eyes. That's interesting. Maybe we can see if you can find all of the pieces of the puzzle. Yeah, there's more there. It's more complete than the other one you found, so... Yeah. <laughs> Maybe the third one is complete. It's day two. We're back on the western front. Today I'm with Josh and Faye 98 k There's a lot of foxholes in this area. We're trying out a new forest at the moment. So let's see if this carries some fruit as well. All right, so Josh just came walking over from right from our bags over there where we were digging at those foxholes. And a couple of meters further, I have my very first signal of the day. And you can see it over there. First coin of the day. There are five Reichsbennig. There should be an eagle with swastika on the backside. Just using a plastic brush over here. There we go. It's not in the best condition, but there's the eagle with swastika. Down there, I think it says 1937. And the other side is a bit more clear. There we go, five Reichspennig. So we're still not too far away from the bags. Um, there's quite a lot of signals here. And I just heard a very loud iron signal. And I must say, I was a bit enthusiastic, so I already pulled it out of the soil for quite a bit. But as you can see, we have a Panzerfaust over here. Here's the aiming mechanism. Um, so that's the moment I grab my camera, so we can still do this last bit together. 
There we go. Yeah, it's a Panzerfaust 30. You can see that from the small diameter and obviously from the aiming mechanism. Um, it's, I must say it's in a very rotten state, but we are detecting this ridge line over here and I don't know. <laughs> Could probably fire this at some tanks riding down there. It's a really, really nice find. Cool, well, great start of the day. <laughs> and yeah, it's definitely fired there. It's hollow as you can see. Let's see if you can rub some of that dirt off. I haven't really found the, the 30 version that often. Usually we see the, uh, the version 60 and 100 more often. This is the, uh, the early war model. It only had a firing range of 30 meters and in the end of the war they improved that to 100 meters. So this could be put up straight and they would aim over this. There would be uh, distance indications on this uh, object over here. All right, so my next find. You can see it over here. It's a very interesting button. And there's some pattern on there, but I do not directly recognize this. It almost seems like there's a lion on there. Could this be a Belgian or Dutch military button? I don't know. It's a really interesting one. Weirdly enough, this is a Belgian World War II uniform button. Maybe it originates from the Belgian forces fighting along the British army. Quite an interesting find that we got over here. Um, from this hole came this shaving cream tube. There's English writing there, talking about a clean shave. Well, that sounds nice, doesn't it? It's too bad we don't have the full tube. I cannot really Google this brand, but it clearly says shaving. So that's a nice sign of the Allied forces that were here. There is another very interesting signal right there. Man, I think we've definitely hit a hot spot over here. A lot of activity in this area. Um, so at this point, I just hit this, uh, this iron, this iron find and it's a cylinder. And usually when you find a cylinder of this shape, it's going to be a barrel of some sort or a rifle, I'm not sure. Um, but it's, it's quite a long signal as well, let me just, not sure if you can hear that properly, but it continues all the way up there. So <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a barrel. Let's, let's expose this together, see what it is. Okay, I think it, I think it ends up here, yeah. Could be a spare barrel for an MG, not sure. Or a K98K rifle, but. Yes, yes guys, this is an MG42 spare barrel. It always has this square head on it, and then there's the actual barrel part. Wow, I can't believe how shallow this is. This was really dropped here and they probably just ran off. Must have been a hell of a fight. And there we go. <laughs> yes, that is a neat find. MG42 spare barrel, so the MG42 uh, it was a very iconic German machine gun. It was also called Hitler's bus saw actually. It fired 1200 rounds per minute. Um, and obviously you can imagine with such a high fire rate, the barrel could overheat easily. So they had these spare barrels. They could take them out in a jippy and uh, get on firing again. So uh, that's what they used this for. That's also probably why this was left here. Yeah, I've seen better conditions, but still it's a really neat find. Somewhere in there, the round would enter the barrel, but yeah, it's all filled with mud and rust right now, so. It's uh, really interesting to see sometimes how shallow history literally can be, because I'm just kicking over some leaves here, and there's just live rounds laying here all on the surface. I think this is uh, Lee Enfield actually, 303 rounds. There's a lot of signals right there. And I already dug up some 303 British casings and then a buckle came up. And right now, an even more interesting buckle came up. You can see it right there. There we go. This is a Lee Enfield weapon sling buckle. The Lee Enfield was the, uh, was the standard British issue rifle and they could carry it with a belt and this will be the end of it. A 
All right, so we've moved some hundred meters. That's where we dropped our bags. And Josh is actually looking for a fine brush right now because I just found something really cool. It was an aluminum signal. Usually we find trash if we dig those signals, but I thought let's try it anyway. And look what I just found here. You can see the original green military color uh, from the US Army. There's writing on here. There's English writing on here and we are on the Western Front in Germany, guys. I really wonder what this was, but that writing is quite clear still. You can make that out for sure. This US packaging material contained a protective cover for gas attacks. There's writing here as well. This piece is dated with a production date of September 19, 1944. There is something over here, quite a big signal. Um, since we're finding American stuff here, could be maybe an equipment piece. And this is flat, rusty iron, so it could be a pioneer shovel, foldable shovel. Here, there's that typical oxidation. I don't know if that's either zinc or aluminum. Okay, let's see if you can get the shovel under it. Yeah. Yes, it yes, yes, yes. Nice. It's a shovel, it's gonna be an American shovel. Oh, there <laughs> we go, yes. We're gonna brush this beauty up. Let's see what the condition is below all of that dirt. We know there were some Americans in this area that they've camped out there. There's quite some foxholes. This is really nice evidence of the fact that they were dug in there. So these foxholes were dug by the American soldiers, by the US Army. Yeah, oh, nice that's, that's, that's not too bad. Yeah, we're surrounded by foxholes right now. Probably hard for you to see, but there's a foxhole right here. There's one back there. And I am digging on the side of a very big foxhole right here. Um, and on the edge of it, I just dug up this shaving cream tube. Look how colorful that still is. And the interesting thing is, there's English writing on there. I've never seen this particular tie before. Let's, let's brush it up and see uh, what it reveals. Awesome to see where it comes from, you know. Where it was produced, maybe even a production year. Or is it American even? Sure. Uh, USA. Yeah, right USA. There. This shaving cream tube says USA Omega Brushless. That's awesome. For high speed shaving. There we go. While I was busy with that shaving cream tube, Faye, 98K, was busy with some bigger iron objects. <laughs> I can see a really big rim there. And what is that? An oil barrel lid? It's probably an oil barrel, right? I can't get it out, but... Oh, that looks big. That's probably going to be another oil barrel lid. It has writing on there as well. E-G... E-I-G? I'm not sure. Five, six, seven. You're a power woman, right? <laughs> but there we go. Wow, that's huge! Yeah, it's another oil barrel uh, lid. I wonder if this is American or German, actually. Well, let's put it with the rest, see if there's markings. So we're having a little get together here, staring at those oil drums. And Josh just pointed out that uh, this thing is still filled. Opens first, smoothly. Maybe you can squeeze it out. <laughs> well, let, let's, let's not push it. <laughs> yeah, interesting. There's still shaving cream in there, wow. Usually, this is what I see when people come over running to me when I'm telling them that I found something cool. And before I dive deeper into that, that shaving cream tube I just showed you was on the edge of this dugout over there. And I thought, let's check what's inside of this dugout. And I got a very clear iron signal. I think we can all agree that we're looking at an American hand grenade over here. It's a US MK2 frag grenade. So you gotta be very careful with the stuff, guys. We're gonna rebury it, mark the location, and it will be reported at the end of the day to make these uh, woods a safer place. Josh called me over the walkie, and he's standing in a very neat foxhole. And he told me that he found an M1 Garand clip, a live clip. With the, are those black? Those are black tips, yeah. right? That's, that's armor piercing. Interesting. Nice one. <laughs> yeah, we haven't seen full clips yet today, so. Yeah, these are always cool to find, but unfortunately it's live ammunition, so we're not going to be taking that with us. They contain eight rounds, could be fired semi-automatically. 
probably going to be more clips. I mean, if there's one, there's usually more. Piece of the clip. Piece of the clip, yeah. Yeah, another there's a clip. second one. <laughs> it's a half one. <laughs> yeah, another full one. Hey, there's a third one, nice. This man is gonna find the whole bandolier. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> oh, I feel another one. Oh yeah, another. Wow, well now they're coming. <laughs> there's no stopping you. There we go, four M1 Garand clips. That's not bad for one foxhole. All right, unfortunately it's time to go home. I'll see you again soon on another adventure. Thank you all for watching, especially my patrons. Make sure to check that out if you haven't already and enjoy the exclusive material. Cheers.